Lisa. I'm in the phone box outside the pub and off to the church. I'd like to see you, if you can find me. I knew we'd be too late. She's left this though. You didn't tell me she was a sheep. What am I going to do? Go into them some more. Mac reading. Numbers are a useful way of finding a place on a map. A six-figure reference, 821952, will locate a position on the project map to the nearest hundred meters. But if you take a map and give every point on it a unique number and enter every line and detail into a computer, then you have the basis for a new sort of mapping. In the 1990s, map making is about interactive maps, about dynamic maps, maps in which we can display information. We can symbolize information in many different forms. We can use different colors to display the data. We can display it in many new types, such as three-dimensional maps. We're not restricted to the traditional paper-based static maps of the 1980s and earlier. We can display them in computer, and we can display them in many different fashions. The British Steelworks at Port Talbot is an almost impossible challenge to the map maker. There are hundreds of kilometers of roads and railways and thousands of pipelines and cables, all of which have to be positioned with minute accuracy. To put a building two kilometers long on the same map as a single nut and bolt would be impossible without the aid of a computer. Computer design is uh, a system where we generate drawings on the computer rather than on the drawing board using pencils and rubber. I do it all at one-to-one. -one. Everything is drawn in here at full size, so this actual drawing we're looking at now is drawn in six kilometers long by four kilometers wide. And I can come down to an accuracy of a thousandth of a millimeter, which you can't do on a drawing board. Here you can see the actual old terminal, you can see two ships which are bringing in the raw material. I can actually zoom in now on these ships. I'll zoom in on the one on the left, the MV British Steel. The labs are then taken to the hot mill where they are rolled down from 100 to 150 millimeters thick to about two or three millimeters thick. This is a more detailed drawing of a roll in the hot mill. I can now zoom in on some items on this, closer and closer. Here you can see some, some bolts. I can zoom in even closer again on that one bolt head there. I can zoom in again until it fits the screen. I can now zoom in. You can see the room that we're sitting in there in the office block and zoom in a bit closer. And in this you can see the four CAD workstations. And there's another one, th three, four. And this is the one I'm working on at the moment. I can go in closer again. You can see in white here the menu that I'm using updating. This, this part here is the digitizing tablet, as they call it. That's where I pick all my commands off. The, that's where the two screens are, there. And that's just, just a bit of the electronics behind. And there's a scale rule. You can see this ruler here. That's 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters. It's all drawn in full size. I can get in even closer. You can see there's one millimeter there. It's all drawn in full size. I can even get in closer than that again. There you can see that is one millimeter there now on the screen. This is a tenth of a millimeter. And then I can even get in closer again, that is 0.01 of a millimeter. That is one hundredth of a millimeter. And this is a tenth of a millimeter. So we can get in quite close. Digital mapping at British Steel costs thousands of pounds. But you can buy your own system in the high street. With a home computer and a route planning program, you can enter the start and finishing point of a journey 
and the computer will work out a route for you. You can have a choice of routes. The fastest route via the motorway, the most direct route via the A roads, or even the route for someone who's in no particular hurry. The computer will tell you how long each route should take and print a map and details of your journey. Digital maps are very powerful tools, but you need to get the data into the computer in the first place. Most digital maps in Britain are based on the Ordnance Survey paper maps. What happens is somebody sits with the map sheet and actually traces off all the features that are on the current map um, with a cursor, and that produces the data, which is a series of points, and that's stored in the computer file. Um, each feature that's captured is captured with a feature code so that you can identify the type of feature that it is. So, for example, all the roads will have the same feature code. When you wish to output it, you can actually just select certain features and just print that information out. With digital data, it's also possible for the surveyor to actually take the information out on a computer to survey the new detail, and instead of drawing it on a piece of paper, which has happened in the past, it can be put directly into the computer so that the surveyor can see the, the map data actually being produced instantly. Using digital data, you can also create a digital terrain model, a DTM, which shows the landscape as it really is. It shows the hills in three dimensions, it shows height. So you can see what it actually looks like, and then you can overlay other information, for example, the the river information or the road information on top of the DTM so that you get a better picture of the area in real life. A computer can highlight the shape of the landscape. This shows the hills behind Port Talbot as they actually are. But you can double the height to make the relief easier to see. You can choose different views of the landscape from different viewpoints and heights. Flying down the Avon Valley towards Port Talbot, the digital terrain model emphasizes the height of the hills. You can see the stream at the bottom of the valley and the roads on either side. Zooming in, you can see the motorway and the docks beyond. Because it is based on an accurate map, you can use the DTM to see what would happen to Port Talbot if global warming caused the sea level to rise. To understand problems like global warming, we need to know what is happening to the world. How much of the tropical rainforest has been cut down? How much forest is left? Maps should tell us, but there's a problem. Some, some maps that you would look at would have twice as much forest on as other maps. And it's very important that we, we know, not approximately, but exactly how much forest we have over the Earth's surface. And it's imagery that's recorded from satellites that give us this information. Satellite images give us a unique view of the Earth's landscape from space. Instruments on board the satellite scan the Earth's surface square by square, each square 20 to 30 meters wide. The instruments measure the light and other radiation coming from each square and radio the data back to Earth. Computers then build up an image from the digital data, which can show such things as temperature, water in the soil and the amount and type of vegetation. Here, the red shows tropical rainforest, the blue where trees have been cleared. The area that's shown on this image is 60 kilometres by 60 kilometres in size. It's an area of tropical forest. It's in, in Brazil. And you can see the characteristic forest clearance pattern that is, is going on in this area. The central cleared block in there is about 20 kilometres by 20 kilometres in size which is approximately the same size as the map 
extract you've been looking at for, for Port Talbot. We've zoomed down to an area that is just six kilometers by six kilometers. You can see the areas of bare ground where, which have been, which have had the trees removed from them and where soil, e soil erosion is occurring quite strongly along the lines of the individual roads. You can see where forest is beginning to regenerate in the areas of pale red. And these darker areas are areas of drainage channels where water is being drained out of, the, out of this area and down to the river, which is to the south of the image. One great advantage of digital information, satellite images, digital maps, terrain models, is that they can be stored in the computer and linked in a geographical information system. Geographical information systems bring together many types of data which were previously not compatible. For example, we can put satellite data, we can put census information about people, we can put land use data, and we can put traditional Ordnance Survey map products all together in the same system. We can draw on top of our map of the study area an information image taken from a satellite. This is like a false colour picture taken from space. The urban areas are shown in different colours of blue. The sea is in a very dark blue come black colour and the different types of vegetation are shown in browns and greys and different hues of orange. We can use the computer to zoom in to the area centred on the harbour area of Port Talbot. If we zoom in even further we can now start to see the individual dots and the individual squares which make up the satellite picture. Each of these individual squares is about 20 meters by 20 meters in size. Satellite images give us extra information to overlay on the map. Rather than the detail of aerial photographs, they give us instant data about the landscape over large areas. The images can be processed in different ways to highlight information about the landscape and display it in whatever way is best. This satellite image uses different colours to depict different types of land use information. The sea and water is shown in a blue colour. Urban areas, buildings and roads are shown in a purpley colour. Bare sand and soil are shown in yellow. Green fields are shown in a very bright green colour. Woodland areas in this reddy colour. This type of information is invaluable in geographical information systems. We've produced a land use map showing the vegetation and the urban areas from a satellite image without having to go out into the open air and survey all this data. Another layer of information that can be added to the digital map is population data. This shows the heavily populated areas in red, less populated in blue. Geographical information systems put the map and the statistics together. In a GIS, we have a computer map and we have a database of table which shows the information which lies behind the map. So we can point at different areas on the map and ask the question, what is this? So I point at downtown Port Talbot click on the screen, I can pull up a little window showing all of the information which lies behind the map. Here we can see a database listing of all the information we know about that area. Here's its area, its perimeter, that's the distance around the outside of the area, the county code that it's in, the district that it's in, and some information about the total population. There are 8,471 people in this area of downtown Port Talbot. Here we see the colour 1 to 50,000 map draped on top of a digital terrain model. One of the very striking features of this image is the relationship between the flat land close by the sea, down in the bottom left-hand corner, and the much steeper slopes and the higher land up in the northeastern corner. Clearly hugging the bottom of the steep slopes is the motorway. If we follow the course of the motorway from the left-hand side to the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we can see how it winds around the foothills. Here on the 50,000 map are some cuttings and we can see very clearly how they're cut into the side of the hills. Incidentally, you can see here the 
map symbolism M4 draped on the terrain model. Of course, if you went there, we wouldn't actually see M4 written on the side of the hill. One of the things this shows very clearly is that on the steep part of the slope, the brown lines, the contour lines, are relatively close together, whereas on the top, on the flat hills, and they're much wider apart. We can contrast that very clearly with the coastal floodplain area down in the bottom left-hand corner, where there are very few contours, and those contours which are present are very wide apart. Also on the map, we can see some of the footpaths. There's a footpath here which goes up the side of the hill, following the contour for some part, and then begins to cross the contours as it works its way up the hill. It must be very difficult to climb on this part here where it crosses the contours very steeply. At the foot of the slopes, we can see the main motorway shown in blue, the railway shown here in black, and the main A roads with the roundabouts running along, hugging close to the side of the hills. Here we see the B4286 working its way underneath the motorway and along the valley side past the bend in the river and out into the distance. In the future, geographical information systems are set to evolve quite considerably. They're going to become easier to use, to be used by relatively small children and by people who are not used to using computers. There's going to be the addition of many new different types of data. We're going to put satellite information, moving video pictures, perhaps from films or television. We can begin to answer important questions that face people in their everyday lives. I told you he wouldn't be here. He will, I'm sure. Where is she? We should have spot on her satellite picture. She'd have to be about 20 meters wide to show us. Not really my type. 821952. Bridge over dismantled railway, footpath. Must be in the right place. Some lovely contours by here, look. Romantic, isn't it? Yeah. I don't suppose we could. Don't even think about it. Geography program videos on mapping and weather are available to accompany the series. For more details on how to obtain copies, call 081 746 1111. Tomorrow morning, legends and rituals from around the world and how they're represented in art. The Art of Magic continues this new series at five past nine. Teaching today is in 20 minutes with techniques that will help you develop creative writing in younger children. Now on BBC Two, we're 